Good evening, everyone, and welcome into Clemson, South Carolina for tonight's matchup between the Virginia Cavaliers and Clemson Tigers, the first ACC matchup of the season for both teams. I am Mark Childress along with Megan Bunning. Should be a great ball game tonight. I'm looking forward to this matchup. If you look at both teams on paper, statistically, it's a pretty even match. And with Clemson coming off the midweek game or the last game that they played against Georgia, this is going to be a nice one to watch. Yeah, it's going to be a great one. And speaking of great ones, you mentioned that game against the Georgia Bulldogs. First ranked win in program history for the Clemson Tigers. A 4-1 to victory. They were working it on the defensive side and working it with the bats. Yeah, listen, Clemson's coming in off a win of a top 15 opponent. And, I mean, they pounded out eight hits. Pitching was solid. That was a great win for the program. Really was a great win for the program. And, again, defensively, check out this fantastic double play here and uh, shutting them down in the sixth inning and let the celebration begin. It's been a historic season, first season ever, of course, for the softball program here at Clemson. That's a moment they will not ever forget. So, Virginia Cavaliers starting lineup, leading off with Savannah Avila. She is uh, number two in the ACC in doubles with five. And uh, check out Bailey Winscott down there at the bottom of the order. She gets on base. You better watch out. Six stolen bases and six attempts so far this season. Lining up defensively for the Clemson Tigers, you see uh, across the top, uh, Matamora, Logaleo, and Gumbarda, Taylor Oda, Herrera, and Bonami. The infield and, of course, behind catcher. Uh, first pitch there in the ball game is a strike, and we're ready to go. So we have freshman Valerie Cagle in the circle, and what we can expect from her is mainly she's going to stay down in the zone. I've seen her drop ball. It's nasty. She has two different types of off-speed, a change-up and then an off-speed, which is going to be a little bit faster than a typical change-up. And when the pitcher can throw two different off-speeds like that, that's, that's deadly. Leads the ACC in innings pitched with a little over 64. She's also second in the ACC with 63 strikeouts. Right on the outside corner, three pitches, three strikes, out number one. See Kegel really working that outside corner. What we're going to see from her is she's going to be aggressive early. She's going to try to stay ahead, and that's key really for any pitcher. But Virginia is going to have to be aggressive early as well. They're trying to increase the pitch count. They want to make these pitchers work. First pitch a little bit low. Tori Gilbert, freshman, 5'7". Dig it in. Let's see what Kegel does here. A little bit inside, 2-0. and So definitely a pitch as a pitcher that I would want. However, there are rules. There are these strike zone rules. And the you have to have the full ball on the plate. So back when I played, you could get away with pitching the ball in that middle area between the plate and the batter's box. Sometimes you'll hear that referred to as the river, and that doesn't fly anymore. So when you're ahead in the count, you like to go there and hope that the hitter swings, but it's not going to be a called pitch. No doubt about that third pitch there, Kegel, right down the middle. Ball fouled off to the right side, two and two. Gilbert, designated player. So she's in there for her bat. Let's see what she can do here. 333 on the season. One hit every three times up. Looks like she lost the handle on that one, full count. That's a good look at one of Kegel's off speed. I kind of glanced up, so I couldn't tell if that was a change up or just the off speed. But the key for Kegel is she needs to stay down. She's a down ball pitcher anyway, but when she misses, she tends to miss up in the zone, which can be deadly for any pitcher. So definitely trying to uh, work low in the zone and stay there. We got a chance to catch up with Coach Joe Harden for the Virginia Cavaliers before the game. She said they were going to try to work the pitch counts early in the ball game and see if they can get that pitch count up for Cagle. They've been doing that on this at bat. Off-speed pitch gets her. Two batters, two strikeouts for Cagle. That was a great look at Cagle's changeup. She comes in, flips, just kind of a flip change. A little bit of a palm ball, it looks from here. Typically, when you have a flip change, you're really pulling your fingers off of the seams and trying to get it to spin down. 
nice pitch. Gilbert so far out in front of it. You can see on that last look that they had, she got way out in front of it, just tried to stick the bat on it. Head over to third. Throw to first in time. That's about as easy as it gets for uh, Miss Cagle to start this ball game. We'll go to the bottom of the first inning. No score. No score as we go to the bottom of the first inning. You see the Clemson Tigers starting lineup. Look at that three and four position right there. Valerie Cagle, second in the ACC in homers with six so far this season. Uh, yeah, right behind her, Marissa Gambarda leads the ACC in homers with eight. So uh, watch out when you get to that portion of the lineup for the Tigers. Virginia Cavaliers defensively, Winscott, Covington, Avila. In the outfield, Fox, Goldberg, Ritchie, and Jennings. Friedman behind the plates. We've got a heck of a pitcher on the mound. Yeah, so let's talk about sophomore Allie Rail. She's going to mix all quadrants, and it's specific to quadrants of the pitching zone. That's what Coach um, Harden really focuses on. You may not see a true maybe rise ball or drop ball, but she's going to cut, and she's going to get a little bit of break. She's going to throw in that low 60s, working on that changeup. Second baseman Pereira digs in for the Tigers. Off to the bottom of the first. Squares to bun and takes it 1-0. So something I'm going to be looking for from Rail here, in all seriousness, now Coach Harden talked about one of the strengths of Rail is she is extremely mentally tough. She wants the ball. She's a gamer. She's a student of the game. She's always trying to figure out what she can do to get better. And opponents say that she has, quote, crazy eyes. So I'm looking for those crazy eyes. we got to get some cameras on that. Yeah, that just means, sure. and it's funny, haha, but it also means that she's intense. She's focused. Whatever you've got to do, right? You've got to be dominant on the mound. You've Absolutely. Got to have the, the, the batters fear you, and if crazy eyes works, <laughs> I keep doing it. That's right. Slap down the left field line, a little foul. Count goes to one and two. Yeah, that's the truth. When you're a pitcher, you're out in literally in the middle of the field. So you, the way you carry yourself is a huge factor in not only your performance, but how the team is going to feed off of you. I'm going to work on my broadcaster crazy eyes for later in the broadcast, and then we'll compare. Okay, myself. so that's what we call creepy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're on the field, <laughs> it's appropriate. <laughs> Allie Rail, off speed, a little bit outside, tipped into the glove, out number one. See rail. That was a nice cutting pitch, low in the zone. Really nothing that any hitter could do much with that pitch. Pereira trying to slap that ball into play, and that was a perfect pitch to throw, and she was doing that and trying to work her way up the, the batter's box. Grace Matamore, plate. First pitch popped up. And will take it herself. Very easy there, out number two. So it was a pitcher where they have a strikeout or an easy pop-up back to the mound on the first pitch. You know, it depend on it would depend on who I was facing. At this point in the game, I'll take whatever I can get. But sometimes there are those hitters that you face, and you just want to strike them out. And then there are some that, you know, you're just happy to get them out <laughs> no matter what. Doesn't matter. <laughs> first pitch outside in the dirt, 1-0. Valerie Cagle, again, I said a little bit earlier, second in the ACC in home runs with six, second in the ACC with hits with 22. So she's got the power, and she can put that ball in play. Yeah, and she really brings some depth to the Clemson lineup when she is on the field because she is a hitting pitcher, but she can play another position. I can't tell you as a coach how valuable it is to have athletes that can do multiple things, especially a hitting pitcher. Yes. It opens up another spot for a big bat. Cagle, just a freshman, one of 12 freshmen on this roster, of course, in the first season ever for Clemson softball. Four redshirt freshmen, eight true freshmen. Hit down the left field line, just foul. Count will go to one and two. Doing a good job, and I know we talked uh, to Joe Harden uh, before the game, but uh, doing a good job of mixing up speeds there and uh, keeping the players guessing so far. I think really both teams are going to have to do that. Like we said, they're fairly evenly matched. And listen, off speed and changing speeds is the name of the game. I don't care who you're playing. That ball ripped into right field. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Cagle's going to have at least two. She'll pull up there. First hit of the ball game for either team. Tigers have a runner in scoring position with two outs. Ball 
Well, I was complimenting her on switching speeds, and uh, Kegel guessed right on that one and uh, lined it right down the right field line. Yeah, I think Kegel, I don't know that she guessed. I think she saw that one coming all the way, and it looked just like the pitch from rail. She was ahead in the count. It looked like it was just a little high in the zone, too close to the sweet spot. Marissa Gambarda up for the Tigers now. Again, leads the ACC in homers with eight, leads the ACC in RBIs with 21. Not who you want to face with the runner on second. And I would expect to see that Rails pitches are going to be a little bit more off the plate. Definitely want to stay low in the zone. This is early in the game. So pitching to Gambarda, this doesn't surprise me here, even with runners on. A little bit low from Rails. She's being very careful, as we were just talking about. Count goes to 2-0. and oh. I know you're not intentionally walking her, but you don't want to throw anything up in the zone here. No, you don't. You don't want to give her anything too good to hit. But here's the thing. When you're facing a hitter like this, you cannot back off. You have to attack. You just have to be more precise of where you're putting the ball. Third straight pitch out of the zone. Be interesting to see if Gambarda has the green light. I'm going to guess she does, but we'll see. Another one outside. That'll be a base on balls for Gambardo. Yep. MK Bonaby's coming up for the Tigers, and uh, she had a great night a little bit earlier in the week against Georgia. This hit into right field, scoring a run. Uh, Tigers broke this one open in the fourth inning, and this really broke open the game for Bonaby here as the Tigers went on to win that ball game four to one. She's looking to do some damage again here in the bottom of the first against Virginia. Just on the outside corner, 0-1. Bonamy, uh, you look down the lineup, you don't see many of these on the Clemson team. A senior transfer from Notre Dame where she hit 310 last season. So tons of experience at the plate for the Tigers. Ball is popped back. Count goes to 0-2. Yeah, you know, I think that's something that is really easy to overlook with this Clemson team because they are new. This is their inaugural season. But listen, these young ladies have been playing softball. It's not like they've never played yeah. before. And so I think sometimes that can be overlooked. O2 pitch to Bonamy. Goes up high with that one, swung on and missed. So Allie Rail works out of a jam in the bottom of the first. And we will go to the top of the second inning coming up after this. No score between the Tigers and Cavaliers. A scoreless first inning. Clemson making a little bit of noise, but couldn't push a run across. You see Virginia Cavaliers coach Joe Harden in her fourth season with the Cavaliers. And got a chance to speak to her before the game, Megan. And uh, she's a lot of fun. Really she like is her. a lot of fun. I, I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Listen, she's coming into a program that – it's you know, hard to recruit for because you have the high academic standards. And any time, and Coach Rittman can talk about that coming from Stanford at one point as well. It's just a different ball game when you have to recruit to those institutions. And she's trying to take a program that, you know, admittedly went downhill, and she's trying to rebuild the culture. And it sounds like she's doing a really great job. She has a good group of student athletes on the team that she just thoroughly enjoys. I, I literally got goosebumps listening to her talk about how much she enjoys coaching this team. Cavaliers 8-5 and five on the season. This is their best start uh, since Harden has been there. They have not had a winning season since 2012, so they're on the right track right now. One ball and one strike. That's Donna Friedman, the catcher, digging in for the Cavs. Friedman leads the, cat, leads the Cavs in average and RBIs. She's all the way from out in California. Fouls that one away. And she is probably shocked and stunned <laughs> by <laughs> the, the weather. Way out in front of that one. Again, we continue to talk about the uh, mixing of the speed by both pitchers and uh, keeping them off balance is a big part of it. So what makes Kegel potentially 
more effective, I think, uh, than some that don't have, you know, some most most pitchers have their hard throwing stuff. So your rise balls, your drop balls, your screws, and your curves. And then they have a typical changeup, which is about anywhere from 20, 25 miles an hour difference than their hard pitches. But the difference with Kegel is she has a little cutting rise that is literally an off-speed pitch. So it's going to be a faster than that changeup, but not as fast as her hard stuff. As a hitter, that's hard to adjust to. That's strikeout number three for Kegel. Gets her down in the dirt on that one. Swing and a miss. Looked like she handled the ball okay, but throwing down to first just to be safe. That's three strikeouts and four batters for Valerie Kegel. Kate Covington, the center fielder, now up for the Cavs. Off-speed pitch, strike one. And that was it. That was the correct call on that. That was a, a good look at her off-speed rather than her changeup. Kate's a little bit more used to the cold weather that we talked about. I'm uh, from McLean, Virginia, right down the road. Kind of half uh, offers at that pitch, fouls it away, 0-2. And, and I tell you what, with either one of these pitchers, whether Rail or Kegel, if they can get out in front in the count, uh, they are in control. It's a big problem if you're at the, at, uh, you're at the plate. Yeah, you can see Covington, they're just thrown off. I mean, when you don't know what speed the ball's going to come, and it can come at three different speeds. And listen, you're... Your rise ball, your curveball, those are all different speeds as two, two most of the time. Ball hit to short and scooped up. Thrown over to first for out number two. Oda to Bonamy. That's as perfectly executed as it could. I thought she might have to hurry the throw a little bit because the ball was hit so softly but had plenty of time to make the out. Second baseman, number 15, Arizona Ritchie. Something you have to keep in mind with the Virginia athletes is they have not, they've been playing on the road this whole time. Right. And for those of you that travel a lot, you know what a toll that can take. Now think about being an athlete and having to adjust and sleep in a hotel bed and all that mess. They won't hit their home field until next week for the first time this season. Clemson, of course, opening their brand new ballpark uh, this season. Virginia's about to open up uh, their brand new ballpark as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the broadcast. Ashley Jennings. Fouls that one back behind in the count again, 0-2. That's what we're seeing consistently from Cagle so far. She's getting out in front of these hitters. And that's key to any solid pitching. You want to get ahead. You want to put the hitter in that defensive state of mind instead of on the offense. That also was another great look at that off-speed rise. Just a little high there, 1-2. and two. We don't speak of such things. <laughs> Arizona Ritchie, sophomore, second baseman. Got a 220 on the season. Gets that one down the right field line. Foul. Count will remain one and two. Good job of protecting the plate. There was a little bit outside, but you can't take anything close when you're down one, two in the count. Absolutely. You've got to do everything you can to try to get a piece of it, even though it may not be a great pitch for you to hit. When you're down two strikes, you've got to protect. Good look there. It's hard, too, because Hagel's going up some, especially with the off speed, and then she's coming down with something like that. That was a good hold. See, Hagel's ahead in the count. Good location. I like that location for being that far ahead. Now she's got to tighten it up just a little bit. Just inside, maybe a little bit low. We're up to a full count. Ooh, that was close. Yeah. But listen, that ball has to catch the front of the plate. So I'm not down there. I can just tell you what I know. Payoff pitch, out down the left field line, that's going to be foul. There's been a number of foul balls in the game, and I keep thinking, and I know we're harping on the weather. It's a little bit below 45. The wind's been blowing really hard. I think it was a little bit unexpected for the ball game. If you're an outfielder, I think you want to move around a little bit. I'll go pick up a foul ball rather than just stand there. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. But you know what? That's a really good point, too, because when you're looking at Kegel being, for Clemson, being a down ball pitcher, when the wind is whipping around like that, the good thing is, is your pitcher usually stays down in the zone, so you're going to be looking for more ground balls. Another foul ball. Yeah. 
Arizona Richie hanging tough. This at bat. I mean, this is only the second inning, and she's already, I haven't been keeping up with the pitch count, but she's got a lot. Ninth pitch at the at bat. Ball hit into right field. Hamilton scooped up by Gambarda. Six up and six down so far for the Cavaliers. We head to the bottom of the second. Headed to the bottom of the second inning. No score. Fans having a good time out behind the left field wall. Keeping warm. I like the hoodies. We've got a doubled up hoodie over there as well. It's so appropriate. Hey, listen, you got to do what you got to do to stay warm. Coach John Rittman in his first season with the Clemson Tigers. And, uh, Megan, you've known John a long time. And uh, not his first season around softball by any means. No, Coach Rittman has definitely been around the block, as we say. But let me tell you something. When Clemson hired John Rittman, they got it right. And what a great first choice. He is just good people. He's very knowledgeable. He's very humble. Um, so I, looked at, I expect to see big things. Aliyah Logoleo, center fielder, freshman. Again, you'll be seeing that a lot when they uh, flash up the names this evening. Clemson with 12 freshmen on the team. He's from Nashville, Tennessee. That one right down the middle, one and one. Logoleo missed 2019 as part of her high school campaign with an injury, so she's just glad to be playing softball this season. She's been having a good year so far, batting 400. And you really look at both rosters, both teams are very young. And so that's something for you to keep in mind too, especially you know with Clemson, this is their first year. I don't know if y'all knew that or not, but this is their first year. And you're gonna see some roller coaster. You're gonna see ups and downs, and that should be expected, not just from a first year team, but from just teams that are this young on the roster. Pitch from rail. And over to third. Easy play there for out number one. Fox to Jennings. See, Rail does a nice job with a change up. Textbook play right there. Jojo Hyatt, the catcher now up for the Tigers. Hyatt, also a freshman. Yep, big night on Wednesday night. She's from Buford, Georgia. She went to high school uh, with Logan Kamal and Ariel Odo. All three of them together, and now they're playing at Clemson together. How about I love that. that. That sounds like a whole lot of fun. Fouled away, 0 2. That actually is really smart from a coaching perspective. You know, you're building a new team. You bring in three athletes that already know each other. They've played together, and that's a good core for chemistry. And Kamal and Hyatt, of course, are the battery, right? The pitcher and the catcher, so even better there. Foul the way again. Fan couldn't quite come up with the play there. Still 0-2. Yeah, can we take just a hot second to shout out to the fans that are in this stadium tonight? <laughs> it's supposed to get down in the 30s, and the stadium is pretty full. Lots of ski caps and warm jackets on this evening so they can enjoy this ball game. Pitch a little low, one and two. You can really see rail, I feel like, working. Uh, you talked about the four quadrants, right? Working all different parts of the plates. Uh, trying to keep the Tigers off balance and doing a great job of it so far. Yeah, I mean, she's just solid. She's just trying to hit her spots, mix in the off speed when she can. That ball line to center field will be caught by Kate Covington for out number two. Hard hit ball, but right at Covington. So that was nice contact, but when you're a pitcher and you're on defense, you know what? That's just an out. Yeah. You don't worry about it. You just move on to the next one. That's right, and I think that's been a theme we can tell from Coach Harden. That's been kind of a mentality that this team has taken of 
okay, that happened, what next? So even if a mistake were to happen, they're not going to dwell on it. They've got to figure out ways to move forward. And that's really important because a lot of times you'll see an error happen or a walk or something like that. And then what happens? It's just a continuous cycle of stuff. And you're trying to get out of that bad inning. But when you have that mentality and you believe in it and buy in it, that'll take you far. Bailey Taylor, junior third baseman, now batting for the Tigers. I feel like Rayo resets on every pitch, right? She just fires that ball into the glove. Is she trying to keep her hands warm? Is that part of her routine? I think it's just part of her routine. Now off to the right side. Hit the, hit the railing of the dugout, so I don't think anybody could have made a play on that. One and two. I mean, you'll see pitchers do different things. Some of them will do a full kind of shortened wind-up into their glove. Some of them will just like what you're seeing Rail do right there. And it's just part of their rhythm. It's part of keeping themselves loose, keeping their wrist snap, get the feel of the ball. One-two pitch. Taylor fouls it off her own left leg there. She's going to walk that one off. I don't blame her. Yeah, that's a good example of Rail. She's working that inner middle quadrant and we talked to coach Harden and coach Harden said you know she's not going to throw necessarily a really uh, like a screwball that's going to jump or move a mile right it's just going to cut some and I think that was a good example you could see what happened right there and know that certainly did not feel good 30 pitches in for rail struggled a little bit in inning number one but she's looking for a one two three inning here in the bottom of the second Taylor outside, two and two. Taylor, the transfer from Troy. She hit 310 last season. The pitch, down the way again. We have had a plethora of foul balls in this game so far. Both of these teams are doing a really nice job of trying to jump on those pitches that they see in the zone. What I like about Rail right there is she knew that you know, Taylor had gotten jammed up on the last inside pitch that she came and it kind of hurt her a little bit. So what does Rail do? She goes right back to it. Taylor works the count full. Very similar to what we saw from Arizona Ritchie, who got down 0-2. The last inning for the Cavaliers ended up, I believe, with either a 9 or a 10 pitch at bat. We're starting to get into that same territory now for Bailey Taylor. Taylor calls timeout. A little game of cat and mouse here. They up pitch from rail, outside, and Taylor works the walk. Runner on base with two outs here in the bottom of the second. Second walk for rail in two innings. Yeah, the last two pitches to Taylor were just not anywhere near the zone. Not sure what happened, not sure if she was trying too hard or what. Honestly, the way Taylor was still shaking her hand, she's even down there at first base, we knew that hurt. I would have kept jamming her in on that inside corner, but that's me. I'm a little hateful. I do things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. Like we said, you've got to be the intimidator out there on the mound. That's right. So Ariel Oda, shortstop stepping in. Filling in for Hannah Goodwin, who's out tonight, the usual shortstop. Take that first one, uh, ball one. Goodwin uh, was hit with a pitch against Georgia earlier this week. Out this evening, day to day for the rest of the series. So the Tigers would like to have Goodwin back in the lineup, but uh, hey, when Oda can get in there as well, no problem at all. Two balls, no strikes. I think that's uh, four straight now that Rails miss with. So uh, gonna have a little meeting on the mound about it, and I don't blame him. Donna Friedman go out there to see her. Yeah, this is a good call right here. So they're not using a coach's conference because you're only allowed one of those. But catcher's going out, trying to talk to her pitcher. 
Sometimes all you need is just a little breather. Yeah. I mean, you have two outs. This is the nine-hole hitter. I'm telling my pitcher, hey, listen, let's just get this one and get out of this inning. Fields in a little bit. Fox really creeping in over at third. Oda, right back to the mound. Flipped over to first. That's the end of the inning. We'll head to the top of the third. Cavs and Tigers, no score. Top of the third inning, no score. Valerie Cagle has two shutout innings so far. Cavaliers going to see if they can break through here in the third inning. Ashley Jennings digs in, swung on and missed, strike one. They could see Jennings dem demonstrating. That was a tongue tie. <laughs> Virginia's approach, they want to be aggressive early in the count. They know Cagle is going to come at them hard, try to get ahead. And she has. Kegel's been perfect so far. Three strikeouts, six up, six down. Trying to work her way through the lineup without giving up any base runners here in the bottom of the third. Grounded foul, count goes to one and two. Of that one in the dirt, two and two. So educate me a little bit. So Rail looks like she's got some pitch counts on her arm or some signals on her arm when she pitches and gets a signal from the coach. And it looks like the battery's just working together here for the pitch counts for the Tigers, yes? Yes. So several years ago, what we saw in the sport of softball is we had um, old baseball coaches that were coaching or baseball players that were coaching softball and they started picking the pitcher's signs. So whether that was from the pitcher herself or from uh, one of the fielders. Ball hit the third and off the glove. Out to center field, mishandled again. She's going to try to get into second base. A close play there. And she will be safe. Let's see how they score that one. But Ashley Jennings will be at second with nobody out here in the top of the third. Just off the glove of Bailey Taylor, and really an unfortunate bounce to go out in center field. And then uh, Logaleo mishandled it a little bit. And some aggressive base running from Ashley Jennings to take that extra base, just getting in ahead of the throw. Yeah, that was heads up base, base running by Jennings. And, you know, that was a good hit. That was in the 5 6 hole. So, I mean, there wasn't really much that could happen there. And you saw the deflect uh, going into center field. But that also speaks to, you know, when you're in a backup position like the center fielder was in that situation, you've got to field it clean because that's what's going to happen. Listen, they're in conference play. Yeah. And this, this they're going to be aggressive. That one scored a hit. I think it should have been. It would have been an uh, incredible play by Taylor to be able to snag that jump up and throw around at first base. Kayla Fox squared to bunt on uh, the first pitch, trying to move that runner over to third, and she missed it, so she's down in the count, 0-1. Right down the middle as well, 0-2. Cagle's got her where she wants her now. Yeah, so quickly kind of getting back to the armband just to finish that thought. Uh, pitches signs, the pitching signs were being stolen, so they went to the armbands, and it does it does help because they're very hard, difficult to pick the signs, but they take up a lot of time. I think it slows the game down. So now what you're seeing is uh, some schools like Clemson uh, they're going back just to the traditional catcher gets the sign and then gives it to the pitcher. And quite frankly, uh, coaches over in the third base box or in the first base box, you can pick a sign just from how, or pick a pitch by how the pitcher is holding it. So you see Cagle pretty much has the same grip for all of her pitches. Fox fouling that away, still one and two and a great scoop on a ball in the dirt by JoJo Hyatt on the pitch before that, or that runner would have been at third base real quick. Can't say enough about catchers. Sometimes you <laughs> you kind of forget to mention them because you take yeah. them for granted, but you're absolutely right. A good catcher can make or break a pitcher or a catcher, whether they're good or bad, right? Ball hits short, looks the runner back, 
On to first. Nice scoop over there by MK, MK Bonamy. Out number one, and that's exactly what Kegel wanted with nobody out and a runner on second. Kegel doing what she's known to do, keeping the ball low in the zone, getting those ground balls. The defense knows that. So defense has been a little bit of a question mark for Clemson, and Coach Rittman mentioned how the defense is really going to have to be on point. They've been living by their pitching and offense, but when it comes down to it, you've got to be able to make plays like that. Bailey Winscott, very bottom of the order, the left fielder. She's the speedster. Six and six, six for six on the season of stolen bases. If she gets on base. Yeah, you really want to keep Winscott off the base pass right now if you're Clemson. Speed, speed is deadly to a defense, and especially if you're Clemson and you've been struggling on defense, you want Winscott to just to go on back to the dugout because She's going to be tough to defend. Mentioned Tigers trouble defensively. They're second to last in the ACC in fielding percentage. Not where you want to be, and an error this inning is not going to help. That went a little bit outside. Count goes to two and one, and Kegel has not been behind in the count very often this evening. This is a rare moment for her. trying to steal down to third. I think that throw hit the runner. And she's going to take the extra base again, and I'm going to tell you what, Ashley Jennings literally stole a run. She took the extra base when the ball was mishandled in center field. She stole third base outright, and when the ball got away, she got home and beat the throw for the first run of the ball game for the Virginia Cavaliers, and that was all Jennings. Yeah, and you can see here, now she showed heads up base running prior to with the error in center field. Look, good look there. Sees the ball immediately. See the pop up? Look behind her. Nice slide around. Good job avoiding the tag. That was just solid base running. Sure was. Ashley but Jennings, a sophomore. Again, fantastic effort. And being aggressive was what uh, Coach Joe Hart talked about before the game. Doesn't get much more aggressive than that. It doesn't. And listen, with Clemson and that defensive issue, they're going to have to expect that runners are going to be aggressive and really test their arms. But what we miss though is Winscott. Winscott swung through that pitch to give Jennings a little bit more time to make a decision there. She was protecting the runner. Whatever it takes. Two outs in the inning now. Virginia on top. One to nothing. We'll go back to the top of the order in Savannah Avila. 0 for 1 tonight. Foul down the left side, out of play. 0-1. Not sure how you score it there. It wasn't really an error because she threw the ball right on the bag at third base and it hit Jennings and just kind of got kicked away. So I don't think an error will be a part of that. And uh, Jennings coming around for the first run. That ball dribbled down towards first and kind of some miscommunication there between Bonamy and Cagle. Neither one of them could decide how to do it. And Savannah Avila will take it and end up on first base. Yeah, Avila, I, I knew she see, and I was expecting kind of a shrug. It's kind of one of those things. She got jammed. Good pitch by Cagle, and Avila just got just enough on it, and it was a dead, I mean, it was not moving very far at all. Definitely some miscommunication. You can see here, Cagle was called off. You can hit a line drive to center field that short hops the center fielder for a single, or you can hit 120 feet and get a single, and she did right there. Ball's going to be blooped between first and second. It's going to be knocked over down into the corner now. Let's see if we try to take some extra bases. Throw coming into home plate. The Jenny Cavaliers are looking for some more runs. Tori Gilbert kind of sawed one off down the right field line. Cami Pereira got a piece of it and knocked it over into foul territory, and the Cavaliers have runners on second and third. See a good use of a timeout here. There's been kind of what I was talking about before, where you see one thing, one miscue happen, and it kind of snowballs, and this is what we've seen here. And I think some of this, too, is you see some miscommunication. You saw Pereira kind of dive for that ball, which she probably shouldn't have. And I think some of this has to do with just a young team. Yep. And this is just a matter of them learning. This is just a learning curve right now. So the shortstop, Katie Goldberg, will be coming up with runners on second 
at third. Tori Gilbert going all the way to second on that play, and Savannah Avila making her way over to third base. Cats have something cooking, looking for more here in the top of the third, already on top, one to nothing. Ball placement importance. It's about the only place on the field she could have hit that and ended up with the result that she did, but uh, that's why you gotta love softball. There are many reasons why I love oh, softball. <laughs> As a pitcher, that would have really infuriated me. I was going to say, Kago looked like she put a little extra juice on that first uh, fastball there, 0-1. That was a little bit outside, 1-1. One one. Goldberg grounded short her first time up. This is a good... I keep talking about learning curve, but this is a good experience, too, for all the freshmen that you have on the field. You have runners in scoring position, two out. How do you step up? How do you bear down? This is great practice. Well, it's not really practice. It's actually yeah. performing, <laughs> putting what you can do into practice, I guess. See if Cagle can wiggle out of this one. Pitch to Goldberg, lined into left field, and grabbed by Grace Matamore. Fantastic play there to stop the bleeding. We'll head to the bottom of the third inning, one to nothing, Cavaliers. Headed to the bottom of the third inning, Virginia on top, one to nothing. Could have been a lot worse in the top of the third inning, but Valerie Cagle got out of it. Keeping the Tigers just one run down. We're back to the top of the order for the Tigers. Cami Pereira digs in. Fantastic play to end the inning. Last inning, Grace Matamore, line drive to left field. Perfectly played. She bobbles that one, messes it up at all. It would have been two runs for the Cavaliers. That was a, a really nice catch out there. You could see that was a line shot. And you could see the ball dying down. What Clemson needs to do now is they need to build off of that momentum. I mean, that was a... They were in a tough spot. Defense was shaky. They need to come out now and put some runs on the board. Pereira grounds one to Arizona. Ritchie, who scoops it up, throws to first. Out number one. And if you're Virginia, you know, on defense, that was a big play. That was a big inning. And so you on defense need to understand that Clemson should be coming at you pretty hard. So you really need to tighten up and stay focused, not let your adrenaline get too high, don't feed into the home energy. Grace Matamore, 0 for 1 on the night. She popped to the pitcher the first time. Leads the ACC with 13 drawn walks. So a very discerning eye at the plate for Matamore. <laughs> on the outside corner, 1 and 1. And I know I'm saying on the corner, you're saying the ball has to completely be over the plate. So over the plate, including the very edge of the corner on that one. That was perfectly placed. Yeah, I mean, you can see the ball is on the white of the plate, and that's what they're looking for back there. Line drive to left field, and Grace Matamore has herself a single. Tigers are in business here in the bottom of the third. You can see that was pretty much. Rail came with a very similar pitch on the outside part of the plate. Matamore just gets out there, gets around the ball. Uses her power to hit it to opposite field. Valerie Cagle stepping in for the Tigers. Probably has the hardest hit ball of the game. A line drive double down the right field line, which adds to her ACC lead in, uh, in hits. Actually, she's second in the ACC with hits with 22. That was her 23rd hit on the season. She's a tough out. Runner on first. So I know we're not supposed to play favorites and stuff, mm -hmm. but anytime I see a hitting pitcher, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just can't help it. You go. You go with your bad self because <laughs> I get so sick of hearing folks say pitchers aren't athletic, pitchers can't hit, and that is false. You're seeing it right here. Bago works the count to 2-0. and oh. Tough spot here for Rail. You've got Cagle followed by Gambarda. Two best hitters, two most powerful hitters in the lineup for the Tigers tonight. Yeah, and Cagle has runner on base here, and she's got a 677 slugging percentage. That's going to be hit and scooped up by the shortstop. Katie Goldberg drags that one in for out number two. Yeah, so I say that, and then that happens, but 
now comes Gumbarda. The good news is for rail is there are two outs. Yes. So you do want to be careful here. But Gambarda with that 836 slugging percentage, she's got power. She's most likely to hit for extra bases. And with a runner on base, that could be trouble for Virginia. Gambarda not intentionally walked the first time up, but she came up with a runner on second base. And uh, Allie Rail was very, very careful with her four pitch walk. Gambarda digs in now. Not sure why the uh, Gambarda and the umpire were talking there. Yeah, so that home plate umpire is Robbie Guess. And Ball's going to get away. Madam is going to work her way down to second base. Now she's in scoring position. The only thing I can think of is maybe her back foot was out of the box. I'm not sure I didn't see her do anything else. Good aggressive but base running by Grace Matamore, just like we saw from Ashley Jennings last inning. Works her way into scoring position. A single would score her here. Rail to Gambarda. Line down the left field line. Hard hit and foul. Gambarda leads the ACC in home runs with eight. She leads the ACC in RBIs with 21. She's batting 327 on the season. Not bad uh, freshman campaign so far for her. like Rail's going to keep going at her. That one high, two and one. And that's a good point with Matamore advancing down to second base. She can be a little bit more careful with her now. Yeah, I mean, she, she had room to be more careful with her from the beginning. But still fairly early in the game. So it looks like they're going to test Rail against Lombarda. Two and one, another one high, three and one. But you know, I'm of the mindset too that you need to have your pitcher be able to face hitters like this, especially as you get into postseason yeah. and, and down into conference. So I'm all for letting her go at Gambarda right now. Better to do it in the opener of the ACC, rather the ACC tournament or something later in the season. That one outside again. And again, be very careful with the most powerful hitter in the Tigers lineup. She will have her second walk of the ball game. Two on now with two out for M.K. Bonamy, who was the big hero from the Georgia game earlier this week. Bonamy, senior first baseman, of course, the transfer from Notre Dame. Looking to even the score up in this ball game. Virginia Cavaliers on top, one to zero. Jumps on the first pitch, pops it up. Left fielder comes in, almost pops out of her glove. Grace Matamore comes in and grabs it, and it counts. We will head to the top of the fourth, and we will be talking with Joe Hart right after the break. Heading back in uh, top of the fourth inning, Virginia 1, Clemson 0. Time to catch up with uh, Clemson's coach, John Rittman. Uh, coach, your take on the ball game so far? Well, you know, Valerie's pitching a heck of a game. They scratched out a run and uh, didn't hit the ball very hard to do it. We, we kind of self-destructed in that inning and um, lost our composure a little bit. Uh, had communication breakdown on the ground ball and then uh, stole third, kind of caught us off guard there. Probably should have eaten that ball and not thrown it and uh, just gave away a cheap run. So now we got to find a way to uh, get back in it offensively and uh, we've had a few chances and just need a timely hit um, but I like the way Valerie's pitching we just got to pick it up defensively and find a way to score some runs here hey coach so I'm curious when you went out to the mound what did you say to your team I just settled them down we've, we've been in that situation before where you know teams have scored runs off us without hitting the ball very hard just finding holes and us not communicating and playing defense the way we're capable of and uh you know, it can be frustrating, so I just went out there and told them, hey, let's hold our composure, Valerie, get us a ground ball, and let's get us in there and score some runs. Right. What's your offensive approach moving forward? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing is we got to look to attack her early in the early in the at bat. She's, uh, you know, she's pitching around Gambarda, obviously, and and uh, we just got to look to hit early in the count when she gives us a pitch. When when she gets ahead, she's been very effective. Thanks, Coach. We'll let you see on the replay uh, what your uh, team is doing to you behind you. Okay, I'm not sure they're they're messing with me. <laughs> Having a good time. Thanks, good luck, guys. Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you. 
all kinds of fun. Both of these coaches describe their teams as uh, goofy and fun, and we're seeing a little bit of that uh, during that uh, interview there. I love it. I love it. This is one thing I just love about the sport. You know, you, you saw it kind of first in baseball, that silliness in the dugout, and then it, yeah. it is it is really transferred over into softball, and you got to have fun out there. That ball hit right down the left field line by Donna Friedman. Well played by Grace Matamore to hold her to just a single, and uh, Virginia picks up where they left off in the top of the third. That ball perfectly placed down the line. Can't do it any better than that. And again, it, Virginia's game plan was to be aggressive early, and you see that first pitch taking Cagle's inside pitch down the left field line. And, you know, kind of getting back to the fun, looks like there's going to be a substitution here, but um, getting back to the fun that you see in the sport, today's athlete, I think they feel more comfortable showing some emotion and cutting loose. And I think coaches are getting to where they see that that works. And I love seeing that because I played in a time when you didn't, you weren't able to do things like that or it was frowned upon. Emma McBride coming into pinch run, the freshman. And like you said, I think we'll continue to see Virginia try to be aggressive on the base pass here. It paid off for him last day. Kate Covington, 0 for 1 on the night. Hit a grounder to short earlier. Swung on and missed. Strike one. How much does it weigh on you on the mound if uh, you know, you're Valerie Cagle here? You had runners on pace all last inning, a lot of pressure, and now you literally picked up right where you left off. You wanted to come out and have that easy inning, but you got another runner on base you got to worry about. So I think as a pitcher. Oh, great nice grab play. over at third base. Just gets back in time. Bailey Taylor with the diving catch. That could have been a highlight reel double play. It was a highlight reel catch and one out. Wow, yeah, what a play. That was a, that was awesome, it, and it just gets my heart going and heart racing. And once I want to be out there. But I think as a pitcher, you, know, you come out and you start that second inning. Look at this. I love plays like that. Great grab. Yeah, and it kind of gets to what I'm saying. As a pitcher, things like that pick you up. So you had a first pitch hit, and you're right. You're back with runners on, you know, runner on first, not exactly what you were hoping for. But then your defense comes through, and they make a play like that for you, and it it pumps you up, and it lets you know, hey, I need to get this together. But cagle has been throwing a great game. Arizona Ritchie up now for the Cavs. I was going to be skied out to right field. Marissa Gombardo will grab that one. Two outs in the inning, and hey, I also wanted to give Emma McBride, who came in to pinch run, got way off of first base on that play and was heads up enough to get back and beat the throw because a lot of runners would have been thrown out on the double play. Absolutely. A lot of runners are too aggressive when they come off the base, and she did a great job just not being too aggressive, knowing what her limit was, giving herself time to get back. Jennings 1-1 one and one tonight. Throw down to second. Couldn't be handled there by Ariel Oda, or the runner would have been out. It was a fantastic scoop there by JoJo Hyatt. Had the ball there in time, but Oda couldn't come up with it. And the Memory Brides down on second. Let's look at that one again. Yeah, so this is what speed, this is one example of what speed will do to a defense. The, the throw could not have been any more perfect. But because you have that speed on the base path, it makes you take your eye off the ball sometimes too soon. And so you just, and that happens again with younger teams. And so you just have to learn how to handle the speed and not let it get to you so much. Watch the ball all the way in, then make the play. Just popped out of Otis' glove there. McBride now on second. Jennings. The rare double hit. I don't, you don't see that very often. I think she, that. did she hit it three times? I saw twice. I'm not Sander, sure. Sander, see if you can uh, dial up that replay for us because that was uh, because that's important. of all things We want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a crazy one. One and two the count. Jennings scored the lone run of the game. It's one deep to left field here, right down the line. That ball is off the foul pole. A two run home run by Ashley Jennings on a 1-2 count, and the Cavaliers are on top, three to nothing. Wow. Virginia celebrating at home plate as they should. Ashley Jennings, her second hit on the night, her second run score to the night, two RBIs. Virginia on top, three to nothing, right off the foul pole. 
Yeah, and it looked like Hagel just kind of hung that pitch over the middle of the plate. That was an off-speed pitch. Jennings did a nice job of keeping her timing on it. I love the home plate celebrations after home runs in uh, college softball. They're fantastic. I know. You're not telling me anything I don't know. <laughs> you had a bunch of those? Not me personally. That you were hitting went, the home runs. And, I went and out and celebrated. You celebrated others hitting home runs. That was good. I hit some. How many home runs you hit in college? Do you remember? I don't remember any of my stats. I remember I played. There we go. And you hit a home run at some point, at and some you point. celebrated others' home runs. Yes. So Cagle uh, going to try to settle down and stop the bleeding here. Michaela Fox who grounded to third base her first time up. Now behind in the count, 0-2, and, and uh, Virginia's got to be very happy with where they stand now with a three-run lead in the top of the fourth inning against the Tigers. There's still quite a bit of ball left. So for Clemson, you know, I always hated it when things like that happened with two outs. And Cagle had picked it up. The defense you know, had made a couple good plays behind her, and then she just missed. And, you know, unfortunately, we had talked uh, with Coach Rittman prior to, and he had said if Cagle misses, she usually misses high, and that's when you get in trouble. And sure enough, that's what happened. One and two the count to Michaela Fox. A little outside, two and two. it up there. Ashley Jennings, that was her first home run on the season. Came at a fantastic time for the Cavs. That ball hit down the right field line. Going to be a difficult play there. Just bounces out of her glove in foul territory. Gambarda almost made a highlight real catch. It'll go down just as a foul ball. And I like so that close. effort. Yeah, I like that effort by Gambarda right there. Two outs. Foul ball. She's going after it full speed, knowing that if she makes the catch, they get out of the inning. Full extension ball hit just in uh, the middle of the mid there and popped out. So you're talking about a couple of close plays this inning, right? Uh, you had the ball uh, down at second base on the attempted stolen base by Oda, hitting the glove and just squirted out, and then Gambarda had the same type of thing happen right there. A couple of very close calls defensively for the Tigers. I think Gambarda's was a little bit different because she's having to yeah. <laughs> run Full I mean, extension just a wee dive. bit different. <laughs> yeah. But still, I mean, as a pitcher, especially being in this position, really at any time, you'd like to see that from your defense. Even if she didn't make the play, you know the effort's there. I'm trying to think how many things I would break and where I would hurt by even trying the full extent. <laughs> right. it. She popped right back up, went right out there like it's no problem. I do this every day. Yeah, and you can work with field players and teach them how to dive. Uh, I had a pitcher when I was at old, coaching at Ole Miss, and she – played outfield and had learned how to dive and roll from volleyball. And that was fantastic. That is awesome. Two and two pitch. Caught looking, strike three. That is out number three. Michaela Fox goes down swinging. Ashley Jennings with the two run bomb right here off the foul pole. Virginia Cavaliers on top, three to nothing. Heading to the bottom of the fourth inning, Virginia Cavaliers on top, three to nothing. And uh, Ashley Jennings, coach, uh, nice two-run homer off the foul pole, came at a great time for you. Sure did. She was ready to rock, and she got the right pitch and just let it fly. It was awesome. Hey, coach, so we can see that your team definitely is having fun. <laughs> Don't turn around. <laughs> you warned us about that. I did. I did. <laughs> what, what is? What are you telling your team right now as you move forward in these later innings? Oh, man, it's the fourth inning. There's a lot of game left. We know Clemson's a great squad. They swing it. They're aggressive in the, in the box. So we're going to have to keep coming at them. Um, I, I don't think this is going to be a shutout by any means. So we're going to have to have quality at bats. Keep executing in the circle. It's it's one pitch at a time, one out at a time. So we, the game is far from over. I love where we're at. I love the energy. I love um, how excited we are to play. We're having fun, um, but it's far from over. So just keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, so, uh, Coach, you've got the hard hats behind you that yeah. are being broken out as well. You told us a little bit about that in the pregame. Yep. Kind of a shout-out to the fact you guys will be moving into a new stadium next week. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that. You know, the construction crew, they, they do a lot of work for a facility like that, and, and it's kind of unseen, but can't 
can't have a beautiful facility without all the people that have built it. And so it's kind of the same. We have to put in the work in the dark that nobody sees in order to, to get the results that we want under the lights. And so our, our mentality is a hard hat mentality. Go to work every day. No one's going to see the work that we do, but um, hopefully it shows itself on the field. Fantastic, Coach. Thanks a lot. Good luck Thanks. the rest of the way. Appreciate you guys being Thank here. You. Thank you. Yep. We had hard hats. I think we, we have, like, uh, Periscope. We had all kinds of different things going on. There's a lot to unpack there from what was going on behind Coach Joe Harden. He's very happy with the 3 to nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. And Aliyah Logaleo, 0 for 1 on the night, stepping in for the Tigers. Yeah, I think the hard hats also, she may have, Coach Harden may have mentioned this, but it has to do with work hard. So it symbolizes they just want to put their head down and they want to do work. And if, if you're Coach Harden right now, you want to see your teams continue to have fun, but you definitely need to stay focused. As she said, there's a lot of game left here. And Clemson has been potent at the plate lately. Aliyah Logaleo trying to get things started for the Tigers. Down three runs here in the bottom of the fourth. Pitch from rail just inside, one and one. Allie Rail uh, had a little bit of trouble in the first inning. I mean, she hasn't had a 1-2-3 inning yet today. So she's had base runners on every inning and has done a good job of working out of it. Hasn't made a mistake yet. Rail's thrown a solid game. And look, when you look at her stat line. Ball hit deep to left field. It's going to go over their head, off the wall. Nobody covering second base. And that's going to be a stand-up double by Aliga Logo Leo. Bailey Winscott, there was nothing she could have done, just scooting over her head and off the wall. That one almost got out of here. And Logaleo got all of that pitch from Rail. Look Jumped at that swing. That. Nice yeah. swing there. Ooh, just the bottom of the wall. But again, here is a no another chance for Clemson to follow that momentum. Logaleo stepped up. Now you're hoping that Hyatt follows. Got Hyatt, Taylor, and Oda coming up. The Tigers. Jojo Hyatt, the freshman catcher. Stepping in with a runner on scoring position. Pitch from Rail. On the outside. 0-1. I like how Rail still came back with that first pitch strike. Look, I can see, I can see in her body actions, the way she's moving. She's pumped up. She's locked in. High in a line shot to center her first time up, but resulted in an out, so she is 0-1. Rail working it high and outside. So you're down three runs. Does that change your strategy a little bit instead of maybe trying to bunt her over and, and get a run here? Or are you going to try to play for multi-runs this inning? Or just let it play out? Yeah, I think it depends on the hitter who you have. I believe in small ball and the sacrifice bunt. Uh, particularly as you start getting later in the game and you really are trying to manufacture runs. But if Hyatt's been hot or maybe if she doesn't bunt well, then I would let her swing. Well, she hit it hard the first time up. Is ahead in the count two and one. Logaleo on second. Inside and low, three and one. Katie Bolt Goldberg comes over. Just resetting Allie Rail a little bit. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. She's throwing three balls right after a double that bounced off the wall. Definitely want to give her time to reset. Hitter's pitch here. Hyatt takes it down the middle, full count. Pitch coming from Rail. Hit right up the middle, off of Rail's glove, scooped up by the shortstop. Great play there, Katie Goldberg for out number one. But Logaleo does advance over to third base, one out. Hyatt did what she, what they needed her to do, just move the runner a little bit closer, but that was a great play by Goldberg there at shortstop. It was, and it looked like that glanced off of uh, Rail's glove a little bit too to kind of make the play a little bit more awkward. 
had plenty of time to make the throw, so a great play there. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the ground that she had to cover there, I mean, it was straight up the middle. So runner on third and one out now for Bailey Taylor. She walked her first time up, takes strike one. Taylor, the transfer from Troy, junior. And 143 on the season. She'd like to raise that average right here. Foul away, she's in the hole now, 0-2. If you look at Taylor and then Oda that's coming up for Clemson, if you're rail, you want to go straight at these hitters because they are struggling a little bit. So right now, you're going to make them earn whatever they get. So no playing around here. You definitely want to get out of the inning before you have to turn the lineup over. Taylor down to the count, 0-2, trying to put the ball in play here and get a run across for the Tigers. Check down at first base. The appeal is held up. Well, actually, it's overturned. That will be called strike three. So home plate umpire appealing the call down to first base. Let's see if she went. Oh, yeah. Yeah, clearly went. That is the correct call from the first base umpire. It looks like they're going to go and take a look at this on review. Nope. Yeah, so. Some huddling here. Yeah, so the, eventually there may be video review. I know in the SEC conference they piloted it last year uh, in postseason play, and word on the street is that it may be coming to the ACC, but I think they're going to kind of have that same approach where they may pilot it in the ACC conference tournament first. All right, everybody doing a reboot here. Okay, so that's where the confusion was. It was a substitution infraction by the Cavaliers is what the announcement is. So that was not a third strike. And Bailey Taylor has new life. We will do some more research on that one and find out what went down. Oh, and two count again on Taylor. She drives this one into left field. That's gonna go all the way to the wall and score a run. And Bailey Taylor has a stand-up double. And the Tigers are in business. They cut the lead to three to one. And what a big overturn on the substitution infraction. Cost Virginia a run here. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a mistake that you really don't want to make. And unfortunately, it happens. And Virginia just paid for it. So Bailey Taylor appeared to have struck out. There was a substitution infraction, which gave her new life. And on the very first pitch, she had a line drive into the left field gap for a stand-up double. Tigers have their first run of the ball game. And Ariel Oda steps in for Clemson, trying to add to that one run. First pitch outside, 1-0. Oh. Got Fox and Jennings crashing. Oda looks like she's trying to almost bunt, slap the ball into play. All kinds of chess match going on here. So a lot of times when you have a slapper on the left side, you want to try to throw them outside so that they can hit into the defense right there. And that looked like a full yes. standing swing. So that, that presents another problem because you're trying to throw outside so that she'll hit into uh, third, third base or maybe even shortstop. That's why you see the crashing right there. But when you have a slapper that can stand in and swing, that makes you have to back up. So when you have a triple threat, that's an issue. Yeah, <laughs> Good thing for Clemson. Your eyes get big when you're crashing and suddenly they're swinging full. Ball in the dirt, two and one. Coach Harden, Coach Rittman, pulling all kinds of levers here. Let's see who ends up on top and miss it back. Oda puts the ball into play to third, mishandled, throw will not be made to first, and she will beat it out. Michaela Fox, and what we were just talking about, is it a slap, is it a swing, am I playing back, am I crashing forward? Might have thrown her off just enough to mishandle that one. 
And the Tigers have two runners on now with one out. Yeah, I think that was more of a matter of, you know, Fox would have fielded the ball clean, but look, you could see even on that replay, she pulls her head up and takes her eye off the ball until the ball gets into her glove or before the ball got into her glove because she was trying to check the runner at second. And so again, that's just another one of those lessons. I mean, she's a freshman. That's one of those lessons that you've yep. got to learn. You've got to finish the play, see the ball all the way in before you think about making the throw. And Oda can fly, so any mishandle at all, and she's going to be down on first base, which is where she is right now. Right. So you've got Bailey Taylor on second. You've got Ariel Oda on first. Cami Pereira steps in for the Tigers. And again, another example of why speed is so deadly to defense. Good cut on the first pitch. Foul the way, strike one. Yeah, that speed makes, sometimes will make infielders, especially when they're young, it'll make them kind of second guess and rush through the play and pull their eyes up when they need to stay down on it. That was officially scored an error on Fox. That's a tough one. Looks like that ball got a piece of her hand. That'll be a hit by pitch, and Tigers suddenly have the bases loaded with Grace Matamore coming to the place, to the plate. For the place. Yeah. Well, See, Coach Harden is going to the place. She's going to take some time and try to calm Rail down. You can see Rail just brings the pitch her. clearly in the batter's box. It looks like it brushed her forearm. May have gotten part of that elbow pad. And, you know, rules nowadays are the hitter does not have to move. If it's clearly in the, in the batter's box, then she's going to get awarded the base. I personally think that at some point they need to change that rule. I think the hitter should have to make an attempt unless it's, you know, obviously in the batter's box. Well, the, the, the discipline not to move out of the way is you an important them. piece of that. It really yeah. is. That's why they're really wearing is. elbow pads. You teach them to stand in and let it hit you. All right, so Coach Joe Harden comes out and meets with the pitcher, Allie Rail. The entire infield comes in. Base is full for the Tigers. Grace Matamore at the plate. She popped up to the pitcher and is singled so far on the night. Looking to tie this one up or more for the Tigers. The Virginia defense really needs to bear down here. One out, bases loaded. Rail right in there, strike one. Big pitch right there. And look, you don't have anywhere. You've got one down, and you've got Cagle and Gambarda coming up. So you have nowhere to put anybody. Matamore, the transfer from Army West Point, leads the ACC with 13 drawn walks. She can play any position on the field, except she does not pitch. It's a good resource to have on your team. And she's got a great bat as well, batting 310 on the season. Lays off that high pitch, one and one. Utility players that can really play any position except pitch. <laughs> they are clutch. I mean, it really gives you more flexibility in the lineup. You said you love the hitting pitcher. You've also got to love the, the position player that can play the I ball. I do. Except. I love it. Yay, softball. That's what I feel like. 1-1 one, one pitch is high. 2-1. and one. Grace Matamore, junior left fielder. Had a fantastic defensive play a little earlier in the game. Don't you see that a lot where you make the big defensive play and you turn around and you're at the plate suddenly after that with a chance to make some noise? Yeah, this is a dream moment right now. Pitch, line down the line, left field. That's going to go all the way to the wall. One run is in, two runs are in. They will hold the runner at third base and suddenly we have a 3-3 three to -three ball game. Grace Matamore with the monster double. I think you called it right there. It had a solid defensive play, build up the momentum, comes in and takes Rails pitch inside corner, drives it down the left field line, pumps her team up. Three to three, this has been a wild fourth inning, a two run homer in the top of the inning for Virginia to take the three nothing lead. A two run double right there from Grace Matamore. And as you referenced a minute ago, now you've got Valerie Cagle and Marissa Gambarda coming up, the two big power bats for the Tigers. And it looks like we're going to make a pitching change here. Allie Rail stepping out 
And it looks like Mackenzie Wooten will be stepping in. Let's take a quick break, and we will come back. Our score, 3-3, three to three, the bottom of the fourth inning continuing. So Mackenzie Wooten, the freshman, normally in a closing role, but uh, this is an important moment as well. Tigers have already scored three runs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. They've got runners on second and third, and arguably the two best uh, bats in the lineup coming up with Valerie Cagle and Marissa Gambarda. Yeah, this is a big position for Wooten. Normally, you may have just said this, but I'm going to repeat it. They're using her as a solid closer, kind of put the nail in the coffin type of pitcher, but they needed to make a change. Clemson's on a roll. Something else of note is, you know, Clemson jumped on Georgia in the fourth inning. So what that's telling me is they need to see these pitchers maybe once or twice through the lineup, and then they're starting to make adjustments, which as a coach, you like to see that. You like to see your hitters make adjustments. Valerie Cagle steps in, swings at the first pitch, dribbles one back to the mound. And they're not going to make a throw over to first base, and suddenly the Tigers have the bases loaded again. Valerie Cagle didn't hit it very far, but she hit it in the perfect place. And she's also being called back. So I wonder if they're saying, I'd have to see it on the replay. I wonder if they're saying that it hit her or if she was out of the box when she made contact. No, they're going like, to put her back in the box. Well, John Rittman coming out to talk about it. I feel like it was kind of a delayed call on it. There was no call by the home plate umpire right when it happened, but uh, these guys taking their time to hopefully get it right. Yeah, I mean, you have a World Series here. crew out there. I think he's saying that it hit her foot. Let's see. Ooh. I'm not sure it did. It may have bounced back Very up. Close. It was hard to tell even from there, but it looked a little bit closer. 0-1, still runners on second and third. Off-speed pitch just missed. What a pitch that was. One and one. Yeah, that was a nice changeup. So Wooten is going to just work on hitting her spot. She throws a little bit harder than what you Ooh. saw from Rayle. She's going to work in, out, up, down. And she's working on that changeup, which you just saw. Look to see her in speeds of 64, 65 range. Fantastic changeup there. Tries to fire one by her. It's going to be dribbled to short. The run will score. Throw to first, not in time. Katie Goldberg couldn't quite get there, and the Clemson Tigers have their first lead of the ball game, four to three. Cagle hit it softly to shortstop, and really Goldberg played it perfectly, right? Just did not have time to make the throw over to first base. Cagle hustling down the line. Herrera scores there, and the Tigers are on top, four to three. There was nothing else for Goldberg to no. do. Gabarda steps in, swings at the first pitch, fouls it away. So Virginia took a 3-0 lead with two runs in the top of the fourth inning. And here in the bottom of the fourth inning, the Tigers already have four runs across, looking to add some more. Barta, the transfer from Furman, blasts one down the left field line. That's going to carry foul. Hit that one a long way. Yeah, so as a pitcher, that is still a strike. Let's be clear. Yes. <laughs> still a strike. However, a very long strike, but it counts. Yes, however, you may want to make just a little bit of adjustment. I think that pitch was a little too high in the zone, but you know what? Wooten got a strike on her. Now she's ahead. Gabarda, the, tra the transfer from Furman, 2019 SOCON Player of the Year. Leads the ACC with homers with eight. Leads the ACC in RBIs with 21. Pitches outside, count goes to one and two. You can see Wooden, you, you know, she came high inside on that last pitch that Gabarda almost took out of the park, and then you see Wooten trying to go low outside. A little bit of change of speed there. Probably a smart pitch, <laughs> but it was a complete shift for Gambarda's eyes. One and two the count. Wooten steps out, and he set everything. 
Big moment in the game here. The Cavaliers trying to stop the bleeding. Already giving up four runs this inning. Try to find their way out of this. Outside, two and two. Coaches working overtime this inning in the top half of the inning and the bottom half of the inning. Runners on base. All kinds of choices to make. Off-speed pitch. She offers at it. Now everyone's confused. So the runner's getting stuck between first and second and second and third. And a tag is going to be applied for the out. So all kinds of chaos and confusion there. Yeah, Coach Rittman does not like it. Coming to talk to the home plate umpire now. Did you see him signal the third strike? I think that's where some of the confusion came from. And Gabarda came out of the box and kind of started walking towards first. I think that might be where some of the confusion is. Let's take a look. Yeah, so Gabarda checked herself. I never saw he the never... call. There it is. It was a late call, strike three. So ball is still live here. And Gabarda went down to first base, which I guess added to the confusion there. Yeah, I think Gambarda think it, thought it was ball four. Yeah, and then the tag ended up being made to Matamore. So uh, we'll go to break, unpack this when we get back. Tigers on top, four to three. Headed to the top of the fifth inning, Clemson on top of Virginia, four to three. And we're still talking about the wackiness of the fourth inning that produced two runs for Virginia followed by four for the Tigers. Yeah, so quickly, here's what happened in that craziness, if you want to go back and look at it. The scoreboard here at the field said that it was a 3-2 count. So when Gambarda Chuck swung, she thought it was ball four. The umpire called her strike three. Now, when Gambarda thought it was ball four, that's why she jogged down to first base, which if it was ball four, runners can advance safely. But it was strike three, so the runners were live. And that's – so technically they were stealing. Yes. And that's why she was called out, tagged out at second. Well, they were stealing if it was strike three. Exactly. But if it was ball four, then they were advancing to the base, and I think that's where a lot of the confusion – Right. It was, there was confusion on it was strike three. Wynn Scott, grounder to short, scooped up, thrown in the dirt. Great pick over there by N.K. Bonamy for out number one. So I would fully expect for Virginia to come out – and game doesn't change. You can see in their dugout, they have their hard hats on. They're here to do work. And the mindset is, the mentality is, that happened. So what? What next? How are we going to respond? If you're Clemson, you want to keep that momentum going. You can feel the energy in the stadium. So Cagle really needs to bear down and focus here. Stay ahead. Keep doing her thing. Cagle. Left the top of the fourth inning, down 3 nothing. Enters the top of the fifth inning, up 4-3. Pitch in the dirt, 1-1. One one. We're back to the top of the order now. For the Cavaliers, Savannah Avila is up. She is 1-2 for two with a single. She struck out looking her first time up. Misfire from Cagle, 2-1. Bailey Taylor comes over. Settles Cagle down a little bit. Grounder to short. Scooped up. High throw to first. Overthrows her. And Pereira will be safe at first. You can see Oda kind of had a double tap. Routine ground ball here. Oda, remember, she's new over there at shortstop, at least in games right now. Double tap into her glove. Kind of hesitating. I think Coach Rittman told us that they were on their third shortstop this season. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, Hannah Goodwin, uh, the usual shortstop, got hit in the leg by a pitch in the Georgia game. Uh, she's out tonight. Hopes to return. She'll be day-to-day -day for the rest of the weekend. Uh, Tigers hoping to get her back. So second error of the game for the Tigers. Tigers. 
Savannah Avila is now on first base. Tori Gilbert steps in. She is singled and struck out. Line drive to center field. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Cutoff throw. Mishandled. And she'll make it all the way over to third base. So Tori Gilbert comes right back and ties the game up for the Cavaliers. And we are tied at four. And you could tell that Virginia was still pumped up. They're putting their hats on. I think Cagle just left this pitch a little too far over the middle of the plate. Gilbert does a nice job. Really finding the gap there. Not sure the runner was going to try to come home and uh, the connection there between Logo Leo and the cutoff person was mishandled. And that leads to the fourth run of the ball game. And we're tied up again. Cavaliers have a runner on third. So Tori Gilbert with the double there. Katie Goldberg now steps in. She's 0-2 on the evening. The shortstop. A hit here will give the Cavaliers the lead back. Pitch from Cagle. A little bit off, one and one. So here's the cutoff throw that I was talking about. Throwing a little bit low, short hopping in there. Cami Pereira could not come up with it. That allowed that run to score. Pitch, fly ball to right field. Gambarda goes all the way back. Runner will tag and score. Then the Cavaliers take the lead five to four. Station to station baseball being played and Virginia's back on top. That was just textbook hitting by Goldberg. Long fly ball, opposite field. Gives the runner at third plenty of time to tag up and go. Well, Donna Friedman steps in. One for two. Strike out in a single. She takes strike one. Cavaliers on top. Five to four. It has been a wild inning and a half here. And I get the feeling we're not done yet. Pitch from Cagle. Hit hard to Oda. Throw to first. Can't be scooped out. And she will be safe at first base. So Friedman gets over there. Oda threw that one a little low over to Bonamy, And she could not come up with the scoop. Let's look at that again. Good job knocking the ball down. Yeah, and I think, again, this is just what you expect from a young team. They're playing in front of a packed stadium. They're still trying to learn, but Coach Rittman said, he told us that the defense has really been the thorn so far for Clemson, and they're going to have to figure it out, and they will. And, you know, the good thing for Clemson and for Virginia in this situation is you are playing in front of a packed crowd. I mean, you're looking at, what, 1,600 fans maybe, assuming that they all feel it's a sold-out game. This is excellent time to practice for postseason, and that's where Clemson and both Virginia want to be. Kate Covington 0 for 2. Pop out to the third baseman and ground him short for her. 0 and 2. Going to hit that one to deep center field, and that's going to get past the center fielder all the way to the wall. She will have a double possible play at the plate here. Not going to be in time, and the Virginia Cavaliers add to their lead and take the lead up to six to four. Yeah, I think we're, we might be looking at a pitching change here. I think Cagle is just missing too much over the plate. Virginia's doing a good job of making the adjustment. Logaleo just a little bit too far to run there. That ball hit hard and in the perfect place. And a more aggressive base running uh, by ke the catcher there, Donna Friedman, never hesitated. They're going to leave Cagle in, it appears. So the Tigers struck for four in the bottom of the fourth to take the four to three lead. Virginia turns right around and adds three to that, and they're back on top six to four. Yeah, I think you know, for Clemson, they're looking at the number six hitter. There's two outs. I think they're hoping that Cagle can get out of this inning before they have to make a pitching change. And you said it, unearned runs. 
paying a big difference. Uh, Avila reaching on the air earlier in the inning. She would come around to score. Then uh, Friedman reaching on an air, and she came around to score as well. Take a low with that one. Behind 2 and 0. Oh. Arizona Ritchie. It's fly to right field. Fly to left field. Pitch from Cagle, hit to Oda, throws it low, can't be scooped out. Runner tries to score from third and she'll be safe. Now the runner trying to advance to second base. She's safe as well. Virginia Cavaliers continue to be super aggressive on the base paths, seven to four. You can see the Clemson defense is getting frustrated. Another play where there's an issue with the scoop. Now, yeah, you want the ball up, but over there at first base, you've got to be able to scoop the ball out. I'm not sure what's going on, but I see some shoulders starting to sag. We're seeing a timeout here. They've got to pick themselves up. They still have time to do some damage. Another look. Throw a little high down to second base. A very close play. Yeah, I actually got saw under her the arm. Tag. Yeah, her arm was there on the base. Arizona Ritchie being aggressive. Reaches on the air, takes second base on the throw home. Virginia matches Clemson's four from the bottom half of the last inning with four of their own. Coach Rittman getting everyone focused. Looks like they're going to stick with Cagle. The fifth inning or fifth error of the game for the Tigers with three of them coming this inning. Listen, I've seen teams come back and win with more errors than that. I wouldn't suggest it. It's not the most fun. However, it can be done. Virginia's putting on the pressure, though. Taylor over to Bonamy, and the inning is mercifully over for the Tigers. Virginia adds four runs to their total, and they lead 7-4 to four going to the bottom of the fifth. Heading to the bottom of the fifth, what has been a wild last inning and a half. Clemson scoring four runs last inning. Logaleo leading the inning off with a double. The Tigers kept on hitting from there. Four runs crossing the plate for Clemson last inning. The big double down the line by Grace Matamore for a couple of RBIs. Getting out the infielder there. Tigers took the lead, 4-3. to three. Virginia turned right around with four runs of their own to lead 7-4. to four. First pitch swinging, popped straight up. Could not be handled there by Donna Friedman. That would have been a, a solid out for Virginia. Anytime you can get an out pop up like that in foul territory and really kind of kill the momentum, Bonami 0 for 2 tonight, struck out in the first. Glide out to left field in the third. Trying to get some ducks on the pond here. For the Tigers to start clawing back. Pitch high and outside from Wooten. Bonami. The senior, the Notre Dame transfer, calls timeout. So Wooten came in and did a pretty good job of working out of a jam in the last inning. Has to give her a lot of confidence coming into the fifth. Off-speed pitch, called a strike, one and two. Yeah, look at that nasty little change up. She threw one of those last inning, caught everybody in the park off guard. She does a nice job of selling the pitch through her motion. Sometimes you'll see pitchers, the reason their changeup's not effective, even though it crosses the, the strike zone, is because they're slowing their motion down or changing something in their motion. It's really important for pitchers to be able to have the same fluid motion when they throw that pitch. That's what makes it effective. Mackenzie Wooten, the freshman, normally used in a closer role. I think Coach Harden called her an assassin. Is that what they call her? Yes. <laughs> Tries to sneak one by her there. Foul down the right field line. Just out of the reach. 
of Ashley Jennings. It almost seemed, just talking to Coach Harden, that she may have brought Wooten in actually a little bit sooner than what they may normally have. I see Virginia is, you know, right now they have a three-run cushion here, but there have been two pop-ups that they could have caught for outs, and you can't discredit this Clemson offense. They're coming off solid wins. They've been on a roll. Ball hits slowly towards second. Bonamy will beat it out, so a base runner to start the bottom of the fifth for the Tigers. See, and that's just kind of an example there. Bonamy does a good job of staying in there. She gets jammed up on the handle, but just pushes it through. But, you know, she had a foul ball over here by the catcher. She had a foul ball over there behind first base, and that would have been an out. But now you're looking at runner on first rather than starting the inning with an out, and that sets the tone. That's a difference maker. Aliyah Logaleo, ball one. She got all the fireworks started in the bottom of the fourth inning with her double. One for two on the night. Logaleo batting over 400 on the season. Squares to bunt, hits it foul, one and one. Her feet were moving on that. Looked like it might have been a button run rather than a sacrifice. And Leo one for two. There's that off speed again. She lays off of it two and one. That was a good hold because that was a nice pitch by Wooten. She did a good job of keeping that low in the zone. You could tell Logaleo was struggling with that one. And a good time to throw it, too, after she had done the running bunt attempt. Absolutely. Tries to beat her inside. Logaleo fires one into the screen down the left field line. Logaleo, the freshman center fielder. From Wooten, the off speed gets her for out number one. Another nice pitch by Wooten. A little bit higher in the zone, but look how far off the plate it is. You can see by Logaleo's swing, there wasn't much she could do with that. So if you are going to miss high, make sure it's off the plate like that rather than over <laughs> the wheelhouse part of the plate. Second strikeout for Logaleo. She had that. I don't know if controversial strike out of Gambarda at the end of the last inning, but the one that caused all the confusion in the uh, double play. So two strikeouts and three batters for Wooten. JoJo Hyatt steps in. She's 0 for 2. Ahead in the count, 2 and 0. Hyatt, the second inning, hit a line drive to center field and then uh, hit one off of the pitcher's glove that the shortstop scooped up and got her on in the fourth. The inside part of the plate at the knees, two and one. Perfectly thrown ball there. Yeah, nice job. Whole ball was on the plate. Good job getting that on the inside corner. A lot of late movement on that one. The off speed pitch again. I well, think it's a piece of it, but two and two. That was just dirty. I tell you, I'm a little impressed by Wooten's changeup. She's doing a good job of mixing it in, but she's throwing it for a strike. It's nasty looking. Yeah, it is. She's doing a nice job. That one inside, runs the count full. A big moment here for Wooten. Down just outside of Atlanta, former Buford Wolves, along with Logan Kamal. The off-speed pitch high, and Hyatt can't get it. Second straight strikeout for Wooten. Ooh. Yeah, you can see Wooten's just tearing them up right now with this changeup. 
you could tell that she really just, Hyatt just wished she could take that swing back, I think. Taylor had a double last at bat and a walk. It's the first one inside. One and no. She kept things going last inning with her double that scored Logaleo. Oh, Wooten hits her right in the back. And no question Ouch, on that one. Hear that one up here. Yeah, that one hurt. I don't think that was intentional. I don't either. However. Take however much time you need, Bailey Taylor. See that one again. Do we have to? Thanks. Really in the side. I thought it hit her in the square of the back, but it really hit her in the side right there, which would be even worse. Yeah, and with it being this cold out here, it does not feel good. Okay, so this is a this is an important out for Wooten because now you're looking at the bottom of the Clemson lineup in Oda. Slapper, two outs here. Chances are she's going to hit to the left side of the field. Should be a routine play, either a force at third or if you have to make the throw. If you don't get past Oda, then you're facing the top of the Clemson lineup with runners on base. First pitch outside, 1-0. and Oda just one hit this season. Again, I had a good one. Normally playing shortstop. Was injured in the last game. Oda's in for this one. She's 1-12 of 12 on the year. Had some defensive trouble in the top of the inning, so a chance to redeem herself right here. Yeah, and if you're Oda, look at that space between Wooten and second baseman. Side again, 2-0. and oh. Oda reached base by error. The bottom half of the last inning. Yeah, and that's the thing is Oda has speed, so she puts it in play. She's definitely going to stress the defense. Oda lays off of that one. Suddenly it's 3-0. and oh. Mackenzie Wooten is in a mess. Bonamy on second. She's singled. Taylor on first. If you're Wooten right now, you just need to throw strikes. You need to, you need to let your defense back you up. Strike one from Wooten. High part of the strike zone. Did Dare do that change up here, or are you just trying to throw strikes? I'm just trying to throw strikes. I'm trying to go right at Oda, let my defense pick me up here. Pitch from Wooten. Outside part of the plate, strike two. Boy, those last two were close. It's that late movement on that ball that I think is throwing everybody off. I think that got the plate, but it continues to cut after that, so the catcher's not necessarily catching it over the frame of the plate, but I think that one was strike two. Payoff pitch. Foul ball will do it again. And you know, there's so many things that can take away from a pitch being called a strike. So you're looking at how is the catcher setting up? Obviously the ball has to cross over the plate, right? So, right. <laughs> so there's that part. But How's the catcher setting up, you know, the pitcher's rhythm? And it really is a dynamic between the pitcher, catcher, and the umpire back there. And I know the umpire's on the field right now, and these are elite-level umpires. They have World Series experience, so you have to trust their judgment back there, even if it doesn't look like a strike up here to us. They're seeing it cross the plate. They're very well trained to watch the ball come in, see the ball over the plate, make sure it's in that zone. It's to Oda, she lays off and draws the walk. The bases are loaded for Cami Pereira. What a great at bat by Ariel Oda. That was a fantastic at bat by Oda. So we need to use a little bit stronger term than great, right? Because yep. she went full count, two outs, 
And foul to pitch off. Foul to pitch off. Had some really great pitches thrown at her. One that was one that I probably would have swung at and have been set down. And now you've got the top of the Clemson lineup coming, and you've got runners on every base. You have no choice but to pitch to them. Cami Pereira, the transfer from Furman. She was all SOCON last season. Has a chance to add to the craziness. Two runs in the top of the fourth for Virginia. Four runs at the bottom of the fourth for Clemson. Four runs in the top of the fifth for Virginia. Bases loaded, two outs now for the Tigers. You've got Oda on first, remember. She's a speedster. So anything hitting the gap, she may be able to come all the way around on it. Pereira comes out aggressive, swung on and miss. So if you're Pereira right here, you, you, have, you have the, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like a carrot dangling in front of your face and you want to you got to stay within yourself you've got to make sure you're still seeing your pitch coming outside one and one and the transfer she's a junior she's been in this position before is my guess let's see if that experience pays off From Wooten. It's high, two and one. Remember, Wooten is a freshman pitcher. I don't know how many times she's been in a bases loaded situation like this. Great experience. But again, you've got to stay calm, throw strikes, let your defense do the work. High again, three and one. Wooten also used in closing role a lot, right? So you'd expect her to come in in the last inning. She's thrown a lot of pitches. That might be a part of it as well. She has, but listen, when you have a pitching staff, you have to get used to being in different roles. And so I personally, as a coach, would like to see a freshman in this role. Now, I used to love bases loaded situations because I loved the pressure. It made me tighten up in terms of not doing that. She went to the uh, change up way outside. Two consecutive three passes from Wooten. And the Tigers are clawing back now seven to five. Yeah, you could see Wooten was nervous in that situation right there. She didn't look as confident. She was tightening up on her pitches instead of just trying to stay relaxed, stay in that same rhythm. We hadn't seen that change up in a long time and she tried to throw it and it got away from her. Yeah, well, I mean, she had been hitting the spot all along. The difference is, is she's in a tight position. Love that. Are you giving her the thumbs up? Grace Matamore did a ton of damage in the bottom of the fourth. Two RBIs on her double, has a single as well. So she's two for three on the night. The pitch from Wooten. Outside, 1-0. Keep saying as a freshman, right? She's having a little bit of trouble with the control. You don't want to get behind in the count again, especially 2-0 in a position like this. No, and especially not to the hitters that she's about to face. But I have to hand it to Clemson. They're doing a really nice job of realizing that she's struggling and not being too aggressive at the plate. Make her work. The pressure is on her. Outside again, 2-0. So you think at this point that Madam War is going to wait until she's thrown a strike? Absolutely. I mean, it, in, you know, it is hard not to swing in this situation, but Wooten is clearly struggling. And let me tell you something. You think giving up a home run is bad? Even even if she were to give up a grand slam right now, what is worse is when you walk in a run. Yeah. So she's having to overcome that too. Yeah, but if you're Clemson, I'm almost saying let her get two on you before you think about swinging. Two and one. That change up again is high and three and one. Two consecutive walks. Ariel Oda walked. Danny Pereira walked. Grace Matamore now ahead in the count, three and one. You could even see Coach Rittman down there at third base 
you know, telling Madame Moore it, it literally has to be in this particular box, meaning it has to be on a tee before she's going to swing at it. The middle line to the second baseman, Arizona Ritchie with the great defensive play. And Mackenzie Wooten gets out of a jam. Tigers add one to claw back a little bit in this one. End of five complete. Virginia seven, Clemson five. Virginia Cavaliers took the big lead behind four runs. And it was with all kinds of crazy defensive plays. Stolen base there, some aggressive base running. Two run home run off the foul pole earlier in the ball game from Ashley Jennings. Another big hit there on the top of the fifth inning. Seven to five is your current score. Virginia on top of the Clemson Tigers. And again, some defensive trouble really helped. Numerous unearned runs in the top of the last inning and a brand new pitcher in the circle for the Tigers. So Emma Whitfield, she's another freshman. She's going to throw a little bit slower, so we're looking in the upper, upper 50s, low 60s. She's going to mix a little bit of everything, uh, kind of in, out, up, down, and some change. I think just looking for a change of pace here. So it's Emma's job to keep this thing at a two-run lead. See if the Tigers can come back. First pitch, fly ball, center field. One pitch, one out. That's exactly what you're looking for. Absolutely. Now you're hoping to see if she can do that for the next two hitters. Did you notice who caught that ball? She does everything. She does. Kegel out in center field now. Logaleo moves over to right field. Winscott up for Virginia. Shows bunt, pulls back, 1-0. Winscott 0 for 2. Get one back to the mound. Rounder to short. High, two and up. This really is a good position to put Whitfield in. I mean, she's starting the inning fresh. She's starting at the bottom of Virginia's lineup, kind of get her feet wet a little bit in the game. And Scott shows bunt, pulls back, two and one. Sixth appearance on the season for Whitfield. Five of those now in relief. A little high, three and one. Yeah, so you're looking for the top of the ball to be at the bottom of the sternum when you're looking at pitches high in the zone there. And I'll just leave that there. <laughs> that one was okay. Three and two, full count. And you might be thinking Clemson has K-Mall. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. Logan K-Mall. Yeah. Okay. Started to second guess myself there. Self-doubt creeping in. But you also have to remember that Clemson has to play Virginia two more times. And so you can look to try to save K-Mall, start her fresh is what you're hoping for tomorrow's game, and then maybe bring whoever, you know, however she does tomorrow, she, you may see her again. Virginia may see her again on Sunday. Or you have Kegel that hasn't gone a full seven. Pitch, line drive down the right field line is going to be fair. And the Tigers really roll, I don't want to say thin pitching staff because that's not fair, but Kegel, Kmall, and occasionally Whitfield has been and they're pitching this season. Yep, low delay over and right. Full count. 
pitch. You can tell by the way Virginia's swinging the bats right now against Whitfield. You can see the speed difference and just how much that timing is messing them up some. Sky towards center. Cagle tracking it down. It's the play, two outs. You know, just to kind of talk a little bit more about what an athlete Cagle is. I mean, she just went from the mound and she went to center field. <laughs> okay, so you, you, you yeah, didn't, you're not hiding her something. No, you're not putting her in left or right just to keep her bat in the lineup. She's hitting third, so let's just bring that out. But she went to center field. Usually your center fielder has a lot of speed. They take command of the outfield. So that really tells you how much confidence Coach Rittman and his staff has in Hagel. Look at this nice little change up. A little high, I guess. One and up. Good field right down the middle with that one, one and one. Not a knock on Whitfield. We've seen some of the other pitchers working different quadrants. She's really working up and down, mainly. Very accurate so far. I'll probably jinx her here. Oh, I didn't. One and two. Yeah, I mean, her job is just to come in and throw strikes and keep Clemson within reach. Field looking for the one, two, three inning. Pop up, let's see if that stays in play. Not quite. Count remains one and two. So Whitfield has two fly balls to center field. To show for her work so far. Here in the top of the sixth inning, trying to get Savannah Avila. One for three. Swung on and missed, strike three. So a one, two, three inning. We haven't seen one of those in a while for the Clemson Tigers. They will come to bat in the bottom of the inning as we see the strikeout pitch from Whitfield again. A dandy one there. Virginia seven, Clemson five. Cavaliers seven, Tigers five. Going to the bottom of the sixth inning. Heart of the order coming up for Clemson. Look at that right there. Clemson Tigers fourth. In all of the NCAA and home attendance, 1,569 per game. Great attendance tonight as well, and it is chilly. We're down in the 30s now, and the wind is blowing. But very impressive uh, that Tiger Nation has uh, supported this team so well. I have to say that I have to give a shout-out to these Clemson fans. And it's not just been tonight. I mean, yes, tonight because it's in the 30s. But they've been like this from the start. I mean, you had a meet-and-greet with the team before the season started, and it was packed. And, you know, you're – Clemson's sitting at, uh, you know, behind two SEC schools, and I can tell you that those SEC schools have been working very hard to build their attendance up. Valerie Cagle, we've said her name a couple of times on the broadcast tonight, right, with her third hit, yes, third hit of the night, and gets it started in the bottom of the six for the Tigers. Yeah, Cagle's just coming in and being, being a strong athlete, athletic, hitting pitcher, she can do it all. And just to kind of reiterate again one, once more on the fan support, you know, you look at Alabama who is leading the nation in the number of fans that they get to their uh, softball games. But that Pat Murphy at Alabama has been building up the fan base for over 20 years. I think he's going on 22, 23 years, and it's taken a lot of hard work. So the fact that Clemson is already at the numbers that they are, that's, that says something. Marissa Gambarda. Two walks and a strikeout so far this evening. Ahead in the count, 2-0. Oh. Marta leads the ACC in home runs, leads the ACC in RBIs. Got to be careful. We talk about freshmen getting experience. Wooten's getting some right here. One's outside, 3 in. Clemson sitting in a good good spot right now. You're in the sixth inning. This is who you want up to bat. You want Kegel up and you want Gambardi. You want that middle part of the lineup. Kegel did exactly what she needed to do. She got on base, and now you have your power hitter who hits for extra bases up. This is where you want to be. 
Three and zero to Gambarda. Already drawn two walks. That one in there for strike one. So you're not considering a hit and run or anything in this situation, right, with Gambarda? No, I'm considering Gambarda hitting. That's what I'm considering. <laughs> Just let her do her thing. For Wooten. Just out of the zone. Change up. She walks Gambarda, the third walk of Gambarda this evening. Tigers are in business, two on with nobody out. Yeah, so that puts another runner on base, but it's Gambarda. And so when you have a four hitter that has that much power that is constantly getting walked, sometimes you have to think about moving her in the lineup to give her more protection. You want pitchers to, be, to throw to her because of the power she brings. I wouldn't be surprised if later on in the season, if Gambarda stays hot like this, if Coach Rittman doesn't move her up to the three spot. So MK Bonamy, the first baseman coming up, she is one for three on the evening. Are you considering a sacrifice here? Do you try to get the runners over in scoring position? Do you try to play for the big inning instead? You got a lot of options here for Coach Rittman. You do, I mean, you have no outs here. And MK, you know, you, you said she's one for three, right? So yep. she's, she's not been hitting that well this game so you may you may go ahead and sacrifice them over put run put two runners in scoring position and then see what Logaleo can do but if you're going to do something this is the inning where you're going to play like that Bonami had a big game on Wednesday against Georgia First win over a ranked opponent in program history for the Clemson Tigers. They're looking to continue that momentum this evening. Bonamy the senior, transfer from Notre Dame. First pitch, change up in there, strike one. I think there was a missed sign right there just based off of what the way I saw Coach Rittman respond. It's to Bonamy, puts it in play to second, mishandled, tags the runner. No, does not tag the runner. Everyone's safe, bases loaded. Arizona Ritchie had a little trouble handling that ground ball to her. Picked it up, attempted to tag the runner, called safe, and the umpires are huddling about it. Yeah, so, and listen, from this angle, you teach your fielders to sell it, so you want it to look like you made the tag, and you have umpires, so we'll see right here. Yeah, she bobbles, she goes in. Hard to tell from right there. All right, looked like she got her, let's see. Scoops it up, tries to make the tag. Puts it on her. Yeah, it looks like maybe she got her on the arm, but again, you can't get a definitive view. So we'll try again. And they're going to call her out. So the umpires huddle. I think they got the call right. It looked like that she made the tag very close. Like you said, a very established umpiring crew here taking their time to get it right. It appears they got it right there. Yeah, and you have to think about, Don, that's Don Brown over there. At U1, uh, he's now you know kind of in that second base slot, and from his angle, he was he was behind Richie. So for him to see that play, that's why you have a crew and they came together and they did exactly what they were supposed to do and reviewed it. Aliyah Logaleo steps in. She got everything going in the fourth inning. And Rittman wants to talk to the home plate umpire about it. I don't know if he wanted to talk to him about it. <laughs> <laughs> Give the crowd a chance to uh, express their opinions. Well, you know, that, that's a that's a game changer. Now it you've is. got runners at first and third and one out, still down by two. Ogaleo, one for three. He's off that one, one and zero. Oh. She got things started in the bottom of the fourth inning with a double, came around to score a run. Struck out in the fifth, back up again in the sixth. Runners on first and third, one out. Virginia on top, seven to five. 
one in there, strike one. Good pitch from Wooten right there on the knees. Yeah, that was a nice spot off the plate or on the outside corner. Low. From Wooten, that went a little bit outside, two and one. Wooten has been pretty effective, but she has walked three Tigers since she's been in the ballgame. Some action in the bullpen. That's Molly Krug for Virginia. Street is high, runs the count to three and one. Joe Harden doesn't want to have to go to the bullpen here, but wants to have the option. I mean, this is the first game of the series. So, I mean, we said it in the open. This is going to be toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I think, all three games. Wooten uh, misses high on that one. Her fourth walk since she's been in the ball game, and the bases are now loaded for the Tigers. Looks like we may be going to the bullpen here. We are. Molly Groove, the freshman, is going to come into the game. Wooten, pretty effective. Came in and uh, doused the fire in the fourth inning. Had a little struggle with location, but a pretty good outing from the freshman who will hand the ball to another freshman. Molly Groove will be coming into the ball game. We'll take a break. While Virginia tries to figure this one out. Bases loaded for the Tigers, down two, bottom of the six. Bottom of the sixth, bases loaded for the Tigers. A pitching change for Virginia. Molly Groob, the freshman, into the ball game. This will be her sixth appearance of the season. Nice ERA, 25 strikeouts, six walks. Cannot afford any mistakes here. As the Tigers have the bases loaded, Valerie Cagle got a single to start the action in the inning. Gambardo with the walk. Bonamy with the grounder to second base with a little bit of confusion around whether a runner was tagged. I think they got that call correct. Logaleo draws the walk. Jojo Hyatt, the catcher. Freshman steps in with the bases loaded, down two. This is what it's all about right here. And I, I, I really don't know what group is going to throw. I don't have a scouting report on her, but I can tell you from the stat line that she was brought in to throw strikes, which apparently she does very well, and that's all they need her to do right now. You're not trying to really strike anybody out. You're trying to put the ball over the plate, let the defense work for you. First pitch from Groove. Outside 1 0. Tigers will take a run however they can get it. So Clemson's kind of in a similar spot that they were you know, an inning or so ago, and pitchers are struggling. So if I'm Clemson, I'm sitting there and making them get a strike on me before I think about doing anything. Pitch from Groove. Popped up just over second base. One run is going to score. Bases will remain full. Ball game is now 7-6. to six. JoJo Hyatt delivering in the clutch. Yeah, and that's all it takes is she just needed to find space. She found the green, just popped on the end of the bat. Outside pitch there. Good job. Good piece of hitting. Yep. You hit them where they ain't. She did it right there. Scores Kegel. Seven to six. Bailey Taylor steps in now. The junior. Hit by pitch. Walk. Double and an RBI. Pitch from Groove. It's in there, strike one. Perfect placement here from Groob. Groob's got a low nice the little curveball. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. What I had to say was more important. It was. <laughs> I'll give that to you. <laughs> Taylor swings at one in the dirt and is behind 0-2. I was about to ask you if you consider some shenanigans here to try to get that seventh run across. But down 0-2, you don't have a lot of options. Yeah, 0-2, you don't. But with one out... You would. If the count was different, I would say yes. Trying to find a way to put the ball in play and see if they can drive a run across. Hits it to short. 
Over to third for the out, but the run scores, and that ties the ball game at seven apiece. So Bailey Taylor does her job. They got the extra point after the touchdown, right? Bottom of the sixth, it's seven to seven. I mean, you couldn't ask really for much better from these last two Clemson hitters. Look, Taylor, not a great pitch to swing at, but she's up there. All she has to do is put it in play, and she hits it to a fielder's choice, but it, it allows the run to score, and that's what's important. Yeah, it looks like she came across Bonamy. Looked like she missed home and had to come back and hit home, so it counts. Seven to seven, there's two runners on. Ariel Oda is scheduled up for the Tigers. Let's see if some changes are made here. So Oda's gonna give up her position in the lineup. Looks like we've got Abby Stewart stepping in. Abby Stewart, the freshman. To replace Ariel Oda. Stewart coming in, really uh, the biggest position of the game, and a game that's been filled with a ton of big moments. There's number 13. Freshman wants to see if she can get the Tigers in front. Runners on first and second, two outs. Swung and a miss, strike one. Hey, Stewart's coming out swinging aggressive. Now, she has not seen a pitcher yet this game, so, if, you know, got to appreciate the freshman coming out with a lot of energy, but she does want to be patient, still get her pitch. I mean, there's two outs here. She's being brought in, try to get the ball through the infield. Pitch to Stewart outside, one and one. And if you're Groove, you're going right at her. Pinch hitter coming off the bench. Taylor on first, Hyatt on second. Stewart at the plate. Outside two and one, Molly Groove misses again. Tigers have come behind from behind the second time in the game. Down three to nothing, took a lead 4-3. Down seven to five and it tied it up seven to seven. Swung on, fouled away, two and two the count. Yeah, so another big, big out right here for Group. She really wants to get through Stewart because then guess who comes up? Top of Clemson order. Yep. And you have nowhere to put him. Molly Groove, the freshman. Pitching to Abby Stewart, the freshman. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Fantastic pitch there from Molly Groove. And she gets out of a big time jam. We go to the seventh inning. Seven for Virginia, seven for Clemson. Now we got sevens all over the place. Virginia seven, Clemson seven, top of the seventh inning. And you just think that the Clemson Tigers have a brand new stadium. They opened it, what, just a couple of weeks ago on February 12th. Well, Virginia's going to one-up Clemson by opening Palmer Park on March 3rd, so early next week against James Madison. Palmer Park named after former Cavalier pitcher Lisa Palmer and her mother Fran. Palmer's lead contributors to the stadium project, and uh, the arms race in college softball continues. It's How a, awesome is that? Two uh, great teams in the ACC with brand-new ballparks. Well, and, you know, that says a lot. You have to give a shout-out to the administration and to the donors and for the folks that are making that happen because it needs to happen. It's time. And, you know, I can just speak within the state, so I'll go back to Clemson here for a second. Now, I've, I've been to Virginia's old stadium, and it was past due, so good for them. I'm glad they're getting that. The state of softball, having Clemson join, there's a reason why I wanted to come and call some of their games because I wanted to be a part of this history because for so long – We've not seen them have a team, and we've, Clemson has been an institution that needs a team. So what this does is it it makes the ACC conference stronger. It gives athletes in the region, and particularly in the state of South Carolina, another option, another opportunity to come play. And all around, it just improves the game. Emma Whitfield gets Tori Gilbert for the strikeout, out number one in the top of the seventh. Two straight strikeouts now for Emma Whitfield. 
I tell you, Emma Winfield's done a great job just coming in as a closer for Clemson. She's keeping them in the ball game. Her rise right there, she struck out the side in the, for, in the last inning with that rise. She's got a nice little break to that. A speed pitch in there, strike one. What a pitch right there. Very nice. Yeah, you got to love a good change up. Look at that. Oh, work of art. Yeah, just kind of a little palm ball flip. Nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. She sells it well. That's the key. It's in there for strike number two. Katie Goldberg, the shortstop. And this is who you want up in the seventh inning of a tie ball game if you're Virginia. You've got the heart of the order with Katie Goldberg and Donna Friedman on deck. Goldberg 0 for 2 this evening, but she does have a sacrifice fly and an RBI. Outside one and two. And even during the break, I made the comment that I think you all are going to be in for some really close games, some tight games. We said coming in, these teams were evenly matched for the most part. And what I really appreciate about these two teams, well, I'm going to miss they both are fighting toe to toe. And look at freshmen. Emma Whitfield coming off the bench. Love the emotion. Look, getting pumped up, pumping her pitcher up, letting her know she's doing a good job. Three strikeouts in a row for Emma Whitfield. Donna Friedman, the catcher, steps in. Change up again low. You can feel Emma Whitfield's confidence building from here. You can. That's a really good point. Her demeanor, I was I was kind of noticing that myself. You can see it just in the way she's looking, kind of acknowledging her teammates when they say something to her, but not really completely focusing on them. She's in a zone. She's in a rhythm right now. It's what we call flow state. That sounds glorious. Low state. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm not sure, I've ever been in that. Welcome to mental performance. Yeah, there yeah, we you, go. You may have. I bet you have. You'll have to work with me on that. Swing on a miss break, too. Whitfield looking for her fourth consecutive strikeout. Yeah, JoJo Hyatt telling Emma, keep on bringing what you're bringing. I like it. Yeah, I love Out that. You have a you have a catcher, and you can see Hyatt's on her toes. She's you know, state, she's getting pumped up for Emma. When you have a battery that can work together like that, Hyatt knows that that will help feed Emma. Friedman, the sophomore, another foul ball, fighting hard here. Still one and two. Friedman again, the best hitter for Virginia. She leads the Cavaliers in average. She leads the Cavaliers in RBIs. She's who you want up. Absolutely. And you can tell she's hanging in there with Whitfield. She's battling off these pitches, staying alive. Whitfield hits one to third. Go to first, and we go to the bottom of the seventh. The Clemson Tigers have a chance to walk one off. Great pitching from Emma Whitfield. Sets up a chance for the Tigers to win this one. Seven to seven, headed to the bottom of the seventh. Clemson Tigers scoring two runs in the bottom of the sixth inning. JoJo Hyatt with a single there to score a run. Hit it just where you had to to get that run to come across. Cagle getting in to make the score seven to six. And then Bailey Taylor pretty much sacrificing herself to get the run in. Bonamy missed home, touched home. Officially making the game seven to seven, bottom of the seventh, top of the order coming up for the Tigers. Molly Grew remains on the mound for Virginia. And Cami Pereira, the second baseman, up for the Tigers, looking to walk one off. Pereira, the junior, goes bunt, ball way outside, 2-0. Pereira struck out in the first inning, the grounder to second in the third inning, and the fourth was hit by a pitch, and uh, walked and got an RBI in the fifth inning. The 
transfer from Furman, also con last season. Inside, and it hit her. She's down to first base in the winning run. That much closer for the Tigers. Second time prayer has been hit tonight. Now look, she's on the line there. She's really close to the line, but that pitch was in the batter's box. Good job just standing in and taking it. What you don't now, I, I have this issue with hitters not making an attempt to move, but then you have situations like that that if she had made an attempt to move, she may have it may have missed her. So, you know, that's why you look at having them stand in. But now Groove has put herself in a position that she doesn't really want to be in. She's got the winning run over there on first, and she's facing the heart of Clemson lineup. Look at that. That's nice. Fire. Fantastic catch. Tries to double her up off of first, and she does the defensive play of the night by Michaela Fox. The diving catch, the throw to first base to turn the double play. Goodness. Okay, so oops if you're Clemson. So when you have a sacrifice bunt like that, You've got to be able to get it down. And Fox did a really nice job of rushing. Like she reads it off the bat and has the mind about her to come up and pick off the runner over there at first. That was just a fantastic play. Yeah, SC top 10 right there. Put that one on Sports Center. It's good as you're going to see. Valerie Cagle steps in, two outs now. Ball one. And if you're group, you're saying thank you. That's exciting. Exactly try the type of play that you want your defense to be able to pick you up. And also a great job by Arizona Ritchie coming over from second to first to cover and complete the double play. Pitch to Cagle. Outside 2-0. Yeah, I mean, and that's just standard movement because first and third are going to be crashing in on a bunt situation like that. Yeah, Valerie Cagle's had herself a night. Good night on the mound. Three for four at the plates. Just like we talked about wanting Donna Friedman up if you're the Cavaliers in the tie game, you want Valerie Cagle up if you're the Tigers. Absolutely. Another one in the dirt, 3-0. and I mean, you've got back-to-back -back the most powerful hitters in the Clemson lineup coming up right now in Cagle and then in um, Barda. In Barda. I was getting there. It was just taking me a minute. You let her swing here, or you want the base runner on first? She's swinging, hits one to center field and deep. That ball is out of here. Walk off home run for Valerie Cagle. Are you kidding me? Valerie Cagle just wow. dropped the mic on that. What a game she has had. The Tigers celebrate at home plate as they should. A four-hit night for Valerie Cagle, including a solo walk-off, solo homer to center field. That got out of here quick. I didn't think it was going to get out. I thought it was going to hit off the wall. Just enough to get over the wall. And the Clemson Tigers have won the first game in the ACC in their program history. A historic night for Clemson. This was just really a great matchup between two teams that are going to go head-to-head. -head. Cagle just takes that pitch down the middle right back where it came from. But let me tell you something. Clemson and Virginia are going to battle all weekend long. It didn't get out by much, but it did. Valerie Cagle, a well-deserved celebration. The walk-off solo shot. Clemson beating Virginia 8-7. to seven. Unbelievable. What a ball game we saw tonight. That was a fantastic matchup. And you know, we saw that both of these teams are so young with so many freshmen, right? And we saw uh, some mistakes made on both sides by freshmen, and we also saw some big moments by freshmen as well. So uh, a fantastic ball game. Yeah, it just speaks to Clemson's mentality, having five errors in the ball game and still being able to come back and put on a show like that. But I tell you, they cannot discredit Virginia. Virginia went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them every inning. Coach Rittman all smiles as the Tigers get together for the alma mater tradition after the athletic events. And you mentioned uh, you mentioned five errors, and uh, you don't see many teams win ball games, but the Tigers did. Uh, this one got started off kind of slow. We got to the middle part of the game, and all kinds of offense took over. Yeah, it picked up, and like I said, I think it just sets up the next two games. 
should be great. So, again, Valerie Cagle, the starting pitcher this evening for the Tigers, ends up having a four-hit night, including a walk-off solo home run in the bottom of the seventh inning with two outs for the Tigers to win this one, 8-7. to seven. Good night, everybody.